Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Kadama Woodworks. Now I am so stoked for what I get to make today because I get to make it for the Metatron. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a historical YouTuber that largely focuses on linguistics, Roman, and Japanese history. But he kind of dabbles in a little bit of everything and I highly recommend his channel. I watch it pretty much every day. So what I actually get to make for him is a Kanobo or Tetsubo. It's a Japanese war club that's not too dissimilar from what Negan uses on The Walking Dead. Now, I want this to be as historically accurate as possible, so I did a little bit of research and found that most of the time these were made out of kashi, which is a type of Japanese oak. There's another type of Japanese oak known as nara. You don't want to use that. Now, I can't really get kashi around here, so I have to use a local wood. But since, like I said, I want this to be as historically accurate as possible, I'm actually not going to use oak. I'm going to use beech. And let me explain why. So this hand plane that I got in Japan is the only piece of kashi that I actually own. And if you look at the end grain, you can see it's a pretty special species of oak. You have the medullary rays here, but those aren't the actual growth rings of the wood. To see those, you have to look a bit more carefully. And they're here, 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 and so on. Now when you compare that to a piece of American oak, you saw the medullary rays and the growth rings, which are made up of early wood and late wood. The thing is with most American oaks, the early wood is filled with pretty sizable pores which are essentially holes that run through the wood. And as you might imagine, having a whole bunch of holes running through the wood seriously brings down the strength. Now, if you look at this chart of different types of wood's impact resistance, you can see that kashi is here, while oak is here. But the trick is, if you look immediately next to kashi, you have beech. So this is a piece of beech. While the medullary rays aren't quite as prominent as they are on the kashi, as you can see much more importantly, it also isn't filled with giant holes like the oak is. And if you do a visual comparison between the three, Aside from a little bit of color variation, I'd say the beach almost looks more like the kashi than the oak does. So from a both a functional and a visual standpoint, this is the much more historically accurate choice. And that's what I'm going to go with. Alright, so I've got this pretty massive piece of beach. Weighs about 8 pounds right now. Let's get started. All right, so I wouldn't consider myself a carver by any means, but I really felt like this area by the handle just needed a little bit more decoration. And so what I'm gonna be carving into it is a Japanese maple branch and then the words Akioni. And that means autumn demon in Japanese. And it stems partly from the fact that I'm making this in the fall, but also because the kanabo is a typical folkloric weapon of the oni or the Japanese demon. So I'm gonna give it my best shot. We'll see how it turns out.
pages. And at this point, before we go any farther, I want to talk a little bit about the words kanabo or tetsubo. If you were to translate them directly from Japanese, you'd get things like iron club, metal staff, things like that. But if you look at woodblock prints and other contemporary depictions of them, you'll see that they're lots of times made of wood. They just have metal knobs on them. And these metal knobs are what really make them an effective anti-armor weapon. And what would be historically accurate is like big giant metal nails with big rounded heads on them. And I looked everywhere and I couldn't find them. But what I did find are these things. I don't know if that'll focus, but they're like screw nail hybrids. And I think they're called U-screws. They're available on McMastercar.com. I'll link that in the description. And they're so cool. <laughs> um, there's lots of times when making things that I've needed these. I've needed these for years. And now I finally have them. I know what they are. I know where I can get them. And I'm excited. So what I'm going to do now is I have this surface. And I've marked out 96 spots. And I'm going to go through them all. And I'm going to make 96 little holes directly where I want to drill my holes. Then I'll go through with a drill, drill out 96 holes. And then finally, I'm gonna take those U-screws, U-drive screws, I think is the full name, and I'm gonna put them in. And then it's done, and I send it off to the Metatron. So, I hope you like it. Let's get to it. <laughs> This was a lot of fun for me to make, not only because I like doing stuff with wood, but also because deep down I love doing historical nerdy stuff. And getting the opportunity to make a hopefully historically accurate conobo was pretty awesome. So in terms of actual historical accuracy, see how close I got. This thing is 4 foot 3 and 3 quarter inches, or 131 and a half centimeters, and it weighs just over 4 pounds at 1.83 kilograms. The center of mass is Let's see if I can find it. I think it's right, right there. And I also made a weapons dynamics chart for it to show not only the mass distribution, but also how it will react when different forces are applied at different locations on it. Um, I think that's all I gotta say about this thing. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else in here, just leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to get to them. And other than that, have a great rest of your day. I hope to see you guys next time.